Now we'll study some important theorems for continuous functions. Now this theorem says, if a continuous function has values of opposite sign inside an interval, then it has at least one root in that interval. So suppose this is our x-axis and we have two points a and b such that value of function at a and b have opposite sign. Now case one, when f is positive and fp is negative. Now since the function is continuous, when it goes from a to b, it will take all the values between a and b. So there will be at least one point in this interval a, b, say c, such that fc is equal to 0. And if a is negative and b is positive, then also it will intersect x-axis at least at one point. There could be more than one point of intersection or more than one roots between A and B, but it will have at least one root in this interval. So this theorem is, if we have function fx in the interval AB such that fA into fB is less than zero, and this function f is continuous, that means at least one root of the equation fx equal to zero, it will lie in this interval AB. Now the second theorem is intermediate value theorem. It says, if f is a continuous function whose domain contains the interval a, b, then it takes on any given value between f, a and f, b at some point within the interval. Now what does that mean? Suppose again we have this x-axis and y-axis and then we have two points say a and b and then suppose this is f, a and this point is f b. Now graph of this function will start at a and then it will take any form and finally it ends at b. Now it doesn't matter which shape it takes but as long as this function is continuous it will take all the values between f b and f a. So if we have any value say f c which lies between f a and f b then there will be at least one point in between a b such that this function takes the value f c and that is a intermediate value theorem. Now one important result that we generally use while solving problems is we know that f b plus f a by 2 it lies between f a and f b and from intermediate value theorem we can say that there exists at least one point c such that f c is f b plus f a by 2 where c lies in a b. Now the theorem in continuity is Weierstrass theorem or extreme value theorem. Now this theorem states that if we have a function f which is continuous in closed interval a b then this function fx it will have a minimum value and a maximum value in this interval. In other words we will have two points say alpha and beta in the interval a b such that f alpha is equal to minimum value of fx when x lies between a and b and f beta is maximum value of fx for all x between a and b including the boundary values. So a continuous function in a closed interval will always have a minima and a maxima. So we'll always have a minima and a maxima. Now one of the important property of continuous functions is sign preserving property. Now suppose 
this function fx it is continuous at x equal to a and this fa it is unequal to 0 either f a will be greater than 0 or f a will be less than 0 then in the neighborhood of a a minus delta and a plus delta this function f x it will be greater than 0 in the same way if f a is negative then in the neighborhood of a that is in the interval a minus delta to a plus delta f x will be less than 0. Another important result in continuous functions is if we have a function f x which is continuous in closed interval a b then for all x in this interval a b this integral from a to x f t dt will also be a continuous function. So basically the result is integration of a continuous function is also a continuous function. Another way to write the same result is if this function fx it is integrable in this closed interval a b then this integral from a to x ft dt will be a continuous function. Here is continuity of inverse of a function. So if you have a function fx which is defined from i to its range fi and such that this function fx is continuous and fx is monotonic in i that is it is either strictly increasing or strictly decreasing in this interval then this f inverse which is defined from f i to i it will be a continuous and monotonic function. So say for example, if we have this function f, which is defined on this interval a b, such that its range is from f a to f b, and this function f is say strictly increasing, and it is continuous, then this f inverse which is defined from this interval from f a to f b to a b it will also be continuous and strictly increasing say for example this function f it is defined from r to r and this is y equals x cube and we know graph of x cube is this strictly increasing function and if we draw the graph of f inverse of x and for that we'll draw this y is equal to x line and then take reflection of this graph about y is equal to x line this is the graph of y equals x to the power 1 by 3 and it is defined on r to r now this function x cube it is strictly increasing and continuous and its inverse function f inverse it is also strictly increasing and continuous. So that's our first theorem. Now there'll be some problems in which you'll be given a function which will have piecewise definition defined separately for rational and irrational values of x. Say for example, we are given this function fx which is f1x when x is rational and this is f2x when x is irrational. Now we have to discuss 
continuity of this function fx in x belongs to r now if we look at any point say x equal to a and if we look at this limit limit x tends to a negative fx that means we are talking about value of this function in the left hand neighborhood of a now in left hand neighborhood of a there will be infinite rationals and infinite irrationals so this value will oscillate between the value at rationals which will be f1a and the value at irrational which is f2a and the same way this limit x tends to a positive fx will also oscillate between f1a and f2a in the right neighborhood of a which again contains infinite rationals and infinite irrationals so at each point we get an oscillating value now here we have two cases case 1 if f1a is unequal to f2a and this second case when f1a equals f2a now if f1a and f2a they are not equal then at all these points a we'll get two values of limits so in that case this limit will be oscillating so at all such points this function fx it will be discontinuous so at all the real numbers x equals a this function will be discontinuous if f1a is different than f2a now if both of them are equal in that case both these values they are just f1a and f1a now in this case both the limits they exist finitely and they are also equal to function value at this point so this function fx it will be continuous at x equal to a such functions are continuous at only those points where f1 x equals f2x so all we need to do is we have to equate these two definitions and then we'll solve this equation to find real values of x say x1 x2 so this function fx will be continuous only at these points and at all other points this function will be discontinuous now there will be some functions which will contain isolated points with no neighborhood say for example we have this function fx which is defined by this under root of 1 minus x plus under root of x minus 1 now this first expression it is defined when 1 minus x is greater than or equal to 0 that is when x is less than or equal to 1 and the second one will be defined when x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 or when x is greater than or equal to 1 so this function it is defined only at one point x equal to 1 so if we draw the graph of this function it will be drawn like this single point at x equals 1 and if you put x equal to 1 this value will be 0 so this is the graph of this function fx so for this function its entire domain is this one isolated point and there is nothing in the neighborhood neither on the left and nor on the right in such cases we will assume function to be continuous so in this case this function fx is supposed to be continuous at x equal to 1 so at all the isolated points where we do not have any neighborhood function fx is assumed to be continuous we get this result from epsilon delta definition in this case for every epsilon we will get some value of delta and it doesn't contradict any standard condition so such functions where we have isolated points with no neighborhood are considered to be continuous at those points when we discuss continuity of function we have to take into consideration continuity of individual functions say for example suppose we are given this question where fx is defined as 1 upon 1 minus x 
and it says find the points of discontinuity of f of f of fx now if we look at this function fx it is defined as 1 upon 1 minus x and this function is not defined when x is equal to 1 so this function it has a discontinuity at x equal to 1 now we look at f of fx will be 1 upon 1 minus fx now we put fx is 1 upon 1 minus x so it will be 1 upon 1 minus 1 upon 1 minus x which is 1 minus x upon 1 minus x minus 1 so it will be this x minus 1 upon x now here we have x in the denominator so this f of fx it is not defined when x is equal to 0 and if we look at f of f of fx it will be now we replace x with fx so it will be this fx minus 1 upon fx which is 1 upon 1 minus x minus 1 upon 1 upon 1 minus x so it will be 1 minus 1 plus x upon 1 minus x upon 1 upon 1 minus x which will cancel so this is equal to x so this function f of f of fx it is equal to x now since x is a polynomial function it appears that this function is continuous and x belongs to r but then this function will only be defined if fx is defined and f of fx is defined and we know that fx is not defined when x is equal to 1 and f of fx is not defined when x is equal to 0. So this f of f of fx it is equal to x only when x is not equal to 0 and x is not equal to 1. So this function f of f of fx it is discontinuous at x equal to 0 and x equal to 1. Now if we draw the graph of this function y equals f of f of fx it will be this graph so this is basically y is equal to x line but then value at 0 and 1 they are missing so this function will be discontinuous at 2 points 0 and 1 now when a function has removable discontinuity we can define something called as continuous extension to a point. Now in case of removable discontinuity both left end limit and right limit they are equal and function value at a either it may be missing or this value it may be isolated now suppose value of left -hand limit and right -hand limit it is l which is finite then we can make this function fx continuous by defining f a equals l so we can write this function fx as fx for whatever domain this function is defined and this domain it won't have x equal to a and we'll take it equal to l when x is equal to a and when we define a function in such a way this is called as continuous extension to a point and now this function fx will be continuous at x equal to a.